Something about this topic actually makes me really want to burst out into song, you know? Like that Drake song, for example. P.D., do you love me? Are you signing? Say you'll never ever leave, and then for the next one you can go Brady, and then repeat the entire thing right there. We're talking about Elias Patterson and Brady Kachuk over here today because we had ourselves some updates from a few people in the hockey media landscape to the contract negotiations for the biggest remaining RFAs in the league. Now, Hughes didn't really have an update. That's not to discredit his contract negotiation process. It's just because Brady and PD are both eligible for offer sheets, they are a little bit more in peculiar territory compared to Hughes. So we're going over onto TSN 1050 and taking a look at what Darren Dreger said earlier today, talking about Brady Kachuk, and then we'll also have Chris Johnston, because he had himself a quote, talking about EP40, do you love me, are you signing, say I'll never ever leave, uh, yeah, I gotta get that Drake song out of my head, don't I? This is what Darren Dreger said on TSN 1050 about Brady Kachuk and the Ottawa Senators when it comes to a long-term deal. For whatever reason, the Brady Kachuk camp just isn't interested in a long-term deal. I wonder if, again, the Kachuk family, hand-in-hand -hand with Newport Sports, aren't pushing in that direction with a bridge. And this is honestly pretty scary, because when you take a look at what exactly the Brady-Kachuk contract negotiations were, the guy appears to have rejected an 8x8. Now, I was pretty good at math in high school, but I didn't end up taking it, pursuing it even further in university, but 8x8? $64 million? That's a lot of money right there. And we had spoken earlier about Kirill Kaprizov rejecting that 8 by 9 million dollar deal for a total of 72 mil. But that whole thing got shut down when Kaprizov signed a 5 year by 9 million dollar contract instead, getting the same AAV as what he was offered beforehand just on a shorter term because he wanted better potential to get himself a higher contract in the future. But for Brady Kachuk, it is kind of interesting because... Kaprizov was an absolute dynamic force, he was under a point per game, he was this KHL guy who came over and absolutely tore apart worlds, the most dynamic player the Wild have had in a very long time, right out of the gate. And it would be tough for me to try to argue that that magnitude of greatness that Kaprizov had with the Wild is in the same caliber of magnitude of Kachuk and the impact that he has on the Ottawa Senators. Now, that's not to say that Kachuk is not a valuable hockey player for the Sens team. No, absolutely not. He is a very valuable, very capable, heart and soul kind of winger that goes out there and embodies the spirit that the Senators want to portray every hockey game. But Brady still has more to prove, in my opinion. He is younger, he hasn't produced as much, and he is a little bit more inexperienced in the pro game. Now, I know he has been playing full-time NHL hockey since 2018. He's approaching his fourth full NHL season, but for Kirill Kaprizov, he had been playing pro hockey for a much longer amount of time, and sure, KHL, I get it, it's not as good as the NHL, but it still is pro hockey. Furthermore, when you take a look at Kirill Kaprizov, you see a guy that, honestly, if he does go out there and he scores, like, I don't know, 90, 95, 100 points in a season, you wouldn't really be too surprised, now, wouldn't you? For Brady, it's a little bit more, okay, he kind of has to work a little bit more to start getting his apples, you know? 60, 70, maybe 85 points. We know Matthew's capable of 70-something, so Brady probably going to be on that same track as well. It's just dependent on when. Furthermore, the last point about this update from Drager, I wonder if, again, the Kachuk family, hand-in-hand -hand with Newport, are not pushing in that direction for a long-term deal, and they just want to go with a bridge instead. If they're really believing in Brady in the same way that Kirill Kaprizov believes in himself, okay, we'll sign a shorter-term, five-year bridge deal so that Brady Kachuk will be, what, 26, 27 years old when his contract expires and he gets a full, big, beefy new deal right in the smack-dab middle of his prime? That honestly could be a pretty suitable plan, especially knowing what we know about the Kachuk family and how they like to deal with their negotiations. Matthew and Keith were both pretty tough to negotiate with. So definitely not a surprise that Brady is still in this party right here. It is just kind of nutty though. 8x8, eight eight, apparently he rejected that. He wants a bridge deal instead. Again, it's more applicable to Kaprizov in my opinion, but for Brady Kachuk, hey, you're going to go out there, you're going to get your bag regardless. So that appears to be the current state of the market right now from Darren Dreger. Meanwhile, Chris Johnston had himself a little thing talking about Elias Pedersen. Here's the update from Buck Faustin. I love this Twitter account's username, by the way. Way. Chris Johnston, and it should say Johnston right there, not Johnson. I know, it's a pretty understandable mistake. 
He says his understanding is that Pedersen will take a little less than $9 million on a five-year deal, somewhere between 8 and 8.5. Now, honestly, this is a small tweet. It's a small update, but it's one that I kind of like. I know a lot of people are going to go out there and say, oh man, five years, that's kind of whack, man. Petey's going to be like 27, 28 years old when that contract ends, and we're only going to buy one UFA year if it's five years long. But... You know, just taking a look at the rest of the league, that's kind of the direction that forwards, especially high-quality, elite, borderline franchise guys, are taking right down the middle. Barzal and Point, these guys went out there getting short-term contracts, and then you had yourselves what was the biggest comparable that everybody was talking about when it came to PD. Kirill Kaprizov signed a $9 million AAV contract for five years. So... Because that was kind of the framework that people had in their minds as to being the comparable for Petey, it is kind of surprising to me to see how this number comes about. If it is a five-year deal for Elias Pettersson, that 8 to 8.5 actually gets it done. You don't reach that Kirill Kaprizov 9 million AAV mark. Like, I remember I said this in a previous video, but if Elias Pettersson gets 9 million as an AAV, he better be touching 6, 7, 8 years long. Because that is an extraordinarily high amount of money, but all of a sudden when you're talking about 8 to 8.5, let's say for the sake of argument, halfway in the middle right there, 8.25 for 5 years. Honestly, that's a contract that I can kind of be down with. And I know, it's easy to go out there and say, oh, but it's Elias Pettersson, man, just sign the guy 8 years, whatever he wants, lock him up till he's 30 or whatever. But as I said, man, just the way that these centers in the NHL go for nowadays, it's not really going in that direction. Even with the wingers, too. We talked about Kaprizov, he got five years, and we talked about Brady Kachuk, he's wanting to go bridge as well. So, this is just kind of the norm, I guess, for NHL forwards who are of this caliber and who are in this age range. For Petey, he's a little bit younger than Kaprizov, and he produces at the same rate, and you could also argue that they're kind of in that same magnitude of greatness already with their NHL clubs, so having him actually signed to a cheaper, same-length deal would be, in some ways, beneficial. It's just, for Elias Pettersson himself, he said that he really wants to just play for a winning team. And when he said that, to me, it means not exclusively Vancouver, you know? Like, of course, he's saying that he wants to play for a winning team because he's implying that he wants Vancouver to be good. Who would not want Vancouver to be good if you're playing for Vancouver? But five years also makes sure that if he does indeed go to UFA status and the Vancouver Canucks still happen to suck by that time in 2026, he doesn't have a locked-in Jack Eichel kind of scenario, you know, where he's signed for eight years at a certain amount of money that is pretty all right for the amount of value he provides on the ice, and he is just trapped. This is a guy that, if he signs a five-year deal, will have the option of going to any other team in UFA status in the middle of his prime where he can get a payday and he can choose where it is that he wants to play. So... It makes total sense to me why a guy like this would be going towards the five-year mark, especially if Kaprizov, which was known as the biggest comparable, went five years as well. Now that we're just kind of getting the numbers, it's kind of clicking to my head a little bit more that this could be a little bit closer than we had been led to believing based off of the comments made by other members in the media earlier this week. I mean, look, the Canucks have had this cap space for a while. It's like $16 million with everything accounted for, the actual space and the LTIR money. If they get Elias Pettersson to an eight-something million dollar deal, then all of a sudden that's eight million something left for Quinn Hughes. If you go eight by eight with Hughes, that's right in the ballpark of the other guys who were getting big amounts of money in the defensive market earlier this year. So honestly, that's kind of... You know, I don't want to say the best case scenario because the best case scenario would be each of these guys sign eight year, one million AAV deals, which is totally unrealistic. But still, the clients have to get paid. The players who are talented have to get paid accordingly. And the Canucks are just on that cusp, you know, they're almost there. For Brady Kachuk, it's a little bit off because you could debate he is not worth that amount of money at this point in his career, but he will work towards getting that soon. For Elias Pettersson, it was never a question of how much he is worth because he is worth a lot. It's just the term and the contextual circumstances surrounding the contract he is getting after this one, where he signs that next contract, and whether or not the Vancouver Canucks are going to be good enough for him to say, yeah, I want to stick around. So talk to me in the comments if you're a Canucks fan or a Senators fan. What do you think about Brady and Petey, these new contract updates we have had from Dreger and Chris Johnson? I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.